Have there been many cases in history when a person outplayed an entire state? In a full-fledged struggle, he did not leave his business, but only showed the whole world that his ideas would not be banned. In general, Pavel Durov has already earned a cool movie about himself. I think Netflix may well bring this to life in a couple of years. Now we will tell you specifically how Pavel Durov outplayed an entire country, whether this country actually admitted defeat. Like this video, it really helps me and be sure to watch until the end. I won't go too deep into Durov's biography, let's just say the main thing. He was born on October 10, 1984 in an intelligent Leningrad family. His father, Valery Durov, is a doctor of philology. Mother, Albina, is a teacher at a state university and older brother, Nikolai. By the way, looking ahead, Nikolai has made a huge contribution to the creation of Pavel's projects, and this is absolutely not hidden. People even say that he is the creator of the Russian site Kontakte and Telegram, and Pavel is only the person who is responsible for the public site. This is one of the versions. Pavel became interested in programming at the age of 11. He graduated from school with honors. After that, he entered the Faculty of Philology of St. Petersburg State University. Interesting fact. Pavel knows seven languages – English, French, German, Spanish, Italian, as well as Latin and Persian. In 2006, he graduated from the university with a red diploma, which he never took. In the same year, 2006, the contactee was burned. By the way, you may be aware of Telegram, but contactee is also the work of Durov. The Vkontakte site is the Russian equivalent of the Facebook site, the number of users of which is more than 76 million. Many people may not even know, and before the site was not called vk.com like now, but vkontakte.ru. The history of the creation of Vkontakte began in Pavel's university years. Then he wanted to unite all students in virtual communication which is why he created the forum, is not working right now. Nikolai Durov, Pavel's brother, also worked on Kontakte, as I said early. Kontakte was launched on October 10, 2006, on Pavel's birthday. The design was copied from Facebook, obviously, because of which, by the way, Durov has been criticized many times. In 2007, Kontakte was developing rapidly. From the end of February to the middle of November, the number of users increased from 100,000 to 3 million. In the same year, it bypassed the most popular social network in Russia at that time, Adnaklasniki. Durov was already fighting against censorship at that time, denying the special services in an interesting manner. And at one point, the special service began trying to take away contact from Durov. In December 2013, Durov unexpectedly sells his shares to Mail.ru Group, but declares, I'm not going anywhere and I'm going to continue to monitor the quality of Kontakte. Navalny reacted on Twitter, Durov solved Kontakte. Later, Durov published the reason for the sale, conflict with the FSB. The FSB demanded to give out the personal data of the organizers of the Euromaidan group. I had to sacrifice a lot, including my shares of Kontakte, but I don't regret anything. Protecting people's personal data is worth it. Since December 2013, I have no property, but I have something more important left, a clear consciousness and ideals that I am ready to defend. But already in April 2014, Pavel left Kontakte and left Russia. Despite defending freedom of speech and security of personal data, Pavel Durov was involved in various conflicts. So in May 2012, Pavel Durov made a worthwhile hype on the city day in St. Petersburg. Pavel was letting a 5000 ruble bill airplane fly out of the window of his office right in the center of the city. The crowd quickly lost its head, and the stampede began. 
Many media outlets express dissatisfaction with Duro's actions, saying that he treats people like cattle. Others came to his defense, claiming that people studied riots. Also, Pavel Duro's ambiguous tweet on May 9th cast a real resonance in society. He said, People are celebrating. Of course, 67 years ago, Stalin defended Hitler's right to repress the population of the USSR. Many stars and media personalities reacted to it. Former Russian boxer Waluyev promised to leave Kontakte, and media manager Yuri Dekterov replied, Durov, sooner or later we will meet with you. I give you my word, I will smash your face. You can regard it as a threat. The hashtag Baikot of Kontakte has entered Russian Twitter trends. Another scandalous moment with the participation of Pavel Durov was shared by the blogger Dina Kashin. On March 19, 2017, a video was released on Kashin's channel, where he tells how after visiting the cinema he noticed Durov approach him to take a picture, but he snatched the phone and threw it from the fourth floor. Then some guy took the phone and ran away. This story has become very famous. Durov in turn responded to the accusation with an Instagram post with a geotech of Swiss ski resort. The Vkontakte administration offered to give Dan Akashin a new phone so that he could record his incredible stories. There was also another scandal in which Durov knocked down a traffic police officer and disappeared. But the guilt was not confirmed. There was a scandal with the Russian singer Sergei Lazarev, who was outraged that Kontakte was too pirated a platform. In response to this, Durov deleted all this composition of Sergei Lazarev with the explanation that they do not carry any cultural value. And now we come to what exactly is now associated with Pavel Durov. Telegram Telegram appeared in 2013. But as Durov says, there have been thoughts about that since 2011, when special forces came to his door and then there was no safe way to communicate with his brother Nikolai. Nikolai developed the empty protocol correspondence inscription technology on which Telegram is based. Durov's messenger quickly gained popularity all over the world. Many media personalities have moved from WhatsApp to Telegram. So, for example, the Pops account published a message, how what's up, but better. By the way, Durov publicly called what's up shit. In 2016, Russia adopted an already well-known law called the Package of Yerovaya, according to which messengers must transfer all inscription keys to the stored data on the territory of Russia, but Durov quite predictably refused. In 2017, Pavel Durov reported that Telegram received a notification from the FSB of Russia about a request for inscription case to access user correspondence. Telegram did not provide the keys at the request of the Secret Service, which is why it was fined 8,000 rubles, about $12,000. On April 13, 2018, the Taganski court of Moscow granted the claim of Roskomnadzor blocking the messenger, but in the end, nothing happened. Telegram constantly changed IP addresses to access the service, and Roskomnadzor blocked several million IP addresses under Amazon, Microsoft, Google networks. In response, Durov called on users on April 22 to launch paper airplanes out of the window in support of free internet, which upset some street cleaners. By the way, press secretary Dmitry Peskov stressed that Telegram is blocked in Russia, but not banned. Logic. But in the 2018 year, changes were made to Telegram's privacy policy allowing the possibility of issue numbers and phone numbers of suspecting terrorists. And even now, channels that reveal the data of dishonest FSB and police officers are being deleted there. Durov does this because of the threat that Telegram is being threatened from the App Store if this is not done. In April 2020, Russia finally gave up, passing a bill to unblock Telegram. 
because Messenger is used by government agencies. Roskomnadzor registered the Telegram channel, in fact, simply admitting total defeat. However, many people, when they did this, called for a boycott of their channel. But by the way, not only Russia tried to fight Telegram. Pavel Durov shared information that the FBI tried to bribe his employees by interrogating him in Silicon Valley. He told the journalist Yasha Levin in more detail, to whom he published a large article. To a large extent, everything that I told about Durov concerned his work. But how does the Russian Zuckerberg live? After leaving Russia in 2014, Pavel received citizenship in St. Kitts and Nevis, but does not live there. The passport of this country allows you to visit the whole of Europe without a visa. Now he also holds French and UAE citizenship. After traveling around the world with his team of programmers, Durov stopped in Dubai, where the Telegram office is now located. The choice of Dubai is justified as follows. This is a matter of principle. Many in the West do not understand how much restriction taxes impose on them. Taxes can take up to half of your income. In fact, this means that for 180 days a year, you work for the government. I think I'm able to put the money I earn to the best use for the benefit of society. He only wears black clothes. But that's not the only limitation. Pavel does not eat meat does not drink alcohol and does not smoke, does not eat sweets and fast food, and he does not watch TV. The truth is not a secret that he transplanted his hair. Pavel Durov does not believe in love. Little is known about his family life. There is a rumor that he has two children and who are registered in the apartment of Durov's parents. Not to say that Pavel Durov loves media. But his every appearance in public attracts a news wave. So when Pavel Durov and the Prince of Dubai met, it was Mohammed Al Maktoum, and the details of the meeting were not disclosed, which filled people's interest, and even gave rise to some conspiracy theories. Durov's story is like a movie, and I have no doubt that sooner or later it will still come out in practice. The truth is probably not in Russia. In Russia, probably, he will be exposed not in the best light, but as some kind of American spy.